Hello everyone, this is Hannah, and it's now the time of the year that polyphemus moths are emerging from their cocoons. The first female polyphemus moth emerged from the three cocoons that I was overwintering. Let's talk about polyphemus moth season 2025 and the emergence of Oak One, the first polyphemus moth from the three cocoons. This year, for polyphemus moth season 2025, I collected three cocoons. The first two were found on December 23rd, 2024 in oak trees. Then, for months after that, January to March, I continued looking for and finding more cocoons, but every time it just ended in disappointment. One after another, I found cocoons that had either been parasitized or had already emerged. Many of them were also just too high on the branches to reach. Despite the difficulty in finding more cocoons, I continued to care for the two that I already had. I figured that my plan to have more cocoons this year than last year was not going to work out. It wasn't until several months after the first two cocoons were found that I finally was able to find a healthy third cocoon on April 1st. I checked the newest cocoon for parasite holes and did not find any, and it appeared to be a healthy cocoon. Still unsure about the newest addition, I decided that I would cut a hole into it and the other two cocoons to make sure that the pupa inside was healthy. And sure enough, we had three healthy pupae. The two that were found on December 23rd turned out to be one male and one female, and both of them were alive and wiggling. The newest edition one that had been found on April 1st was a female, and even though she was not wiggling, she looked very healthy. Fast forward to a month later, and just one day after the exciting surprise of seeing my very first wild polyphemus moth of the season, right outside of the house in our own backyard, there was even more exciting news. When I picked up one of the cocoons to do my usual check on them, I noticed that the wing patterns of an adult polyphemus moth were starting to appear on the wing pad area. I cut the hole a little bigger in order to see more of the pupa, and the wing patterns could clearly be seen starting to develop. This is a sign that the moth is nearing emergence, but with my polyphemus moths, it's usually a few days in between the first signs of transparency and the emergence of the moth. So, I decided that I would start watching the pupa more closely. As days went by, the pupa got darker and darker, and eventually, I set up recording on it and began recording for longer and longer periods of time as we got closer and closer. On the early morning hours of May 5th, the abdomen segments of the pupa could be seen just starting to stretch out, but we were still a while away from the emergence of the adult moth. The whole day came and went, and the abdomen segments of the pupa continued to stretch out more and more. By the end of the day, it looked as if she could come out any moment, but there still was a little while longer to wait. The sun went down, and I continued waiting for the moth to emerge. Around 9.41 p.m., the long-awaited excitement finally began as Oak One started to crack the shell of her pupa.
After cracking the pupa a few times, Oak One then paused and remained still for a while. Polyphemus moths do this when emerging from their cocoon to secrete an enzyme to soften the surface of the silk so that they can push their way out. The enzyme secreting process is quite lengthy. With the video sped up, you can see the top of the cocoon slowly expanding as the enzyme softens silk. Viewing the cocoon from the top, the wetness is becoming more apparent as the enzymes continue to penetrate the silk. Oak One occasionally moves in her cocoon every now and then. Let's watch the process from here until she was out of the cocoon. The whole entire process took about two hours. two-hour emergence, Oak One is finally out of her cocoon. Since she wouldn't settle anywhere else, I decided to let her hang and expand her wings on my finger. Let's watch the wing expansion process sped up.
Ooh, look at her eye spots. She's beautiful. It had been great watching Oak One emerge from her cocoon, watching her wings expand, and getting to look at her spectacular patterns and eye spots. But, as sunset approached, it was time to take Oak One back to the place that she came from. So, we took her back to the same park that she was found at. We stayed with her for a little bit as it got dark. Then we finally put her on the branch of a tree and left her there for the night. She was releasing pheromones to attract a male polyphemus moth, and was in a good location to do so. Farewell and goodbye, Oakhorn. Well, turns out it wasn't the last time I would say farewell to Oak One, and a month later, here I am taking care of her caterpillars. This is my very first time raising polyphemus moths or any silk moth from egg to adult. All the other times, I have did it from overwintering cocoon to adult moth, and one time I found a caterpillar that was ready to pupate and kept it until it was an adult, but never from the egg. The caterpillars are now in their third instar stage, and though a lot of them have unfortunately died, the ones remaining have been doing good. And since I haven't updated about the last two cocoons for a while, here they are. They've been doing good, and I've been waiting for them to emerge. Just today, I noticed that one of the pupae had become way darker than the other day, and the wing patterns are starting to come through. We know what that means. Another polyphemus moth is soon to emerge. Stay tuned, as the full story about Oak One and how I got to this point with her caterpillars will be coming. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching! Hopefully the few caterpillars I have remaining will make it to be stunning polyphemus moths like Oak 1. Looking forward to the emergence of Oak 2!